In this video, you're going to learn how to customize your SRS actor in order to achieve the styles visible on screen. For our first style, I want to create a, another band in the transition from shadow to no shadow and from highlight and rim light to no highlight and rim light. To begin, click on the SRS actor and open the default shading tab. Here we can control how non-metallic objects get shaded with an SRS. I'm going to start by darkening the shadow color so the shadows are darker and brightening the highlight and rim light color parameter. So I'll set the velocity to something like 2, so our highlights and rim lights become a bit brighter. To add our first gradient, open the highlight tab and set the gradient. This is a texture that controls the transition from full highlight to no highlight, for example, to the one-step texture. All gradients provided by SRS have the param the prefix t underscore SRS underscore G underscore. So select one step and you will see there's a, a um, transition with one band like we wanted right here. Now I want this inner circle to be a bit bigger, so I want our gradient to start a bit later. So increase gradient start. Something like this looks good. Now I think the the band is a bit too um, is not visible enough. So let's decrease gradient strength. This is a parameter that controls how much the color of this gradient texture influences the final output color of the highlight. So set it to something like this. This looks good. And now we're done with highlights. Let's move on to rim lights. Here, set the gradient texture again and increase gradient start so both bands become visible and increase grade, uh, set gradient strength to 0 0.7 like it is in, in our highlight. Now let's move on to giving our shadows another band. For this, open the shadow tab and set the gradient texture to one step. You'll see there's a band here once again but I want to make this a bit brighter, so decrease gradient strength. This looks about right. Now I just want to make this a bit bigger, so I'm going to increase the shadow size, and I'm going to decrease the gradient start a bit. And now this is all right. If while editing the shadows, you find you are creating something like this, a small um, dent in your shadow line, this is because of your skylight. Now there are two ways to fix this. One, you could just disable your skylight, so set the intensity of your skylight to zero, but you may not want this because this makes your scene really dark. So a different fix would be to set the um, relevant parameter. So for this, this would be the gradient start, as it controls where the gradient starts. So the this transition. If we just increase this a bit more, you'll find there won't be a dent anymore. Now let's move on to the metallic shading. For this, open the metallic shading tab and dark we're going to darken the shadows once again by darkening the shadow color parameter and we're going to brighten the highlights and rim lights by brightening the highlight and rim light color parameter. Now let's begin once again by giving the highlights a band. So open the highlight category and select this band, this one step texture. Now the middle circle is way too small so we're going to have to move the gradient start. Something like this looks right and I want this to be a bit more visible so I'm going to decrease gradient strength to something like 0 0.7. Now let's do the same thing for rim light. This is looking good. Now all we need to do is do the same thing for shadow once again. So set the gradient texture to one step and decrease the gradient strength. Now this is looking good and with this we're done creating our first unique cell shading style with SRS. For the next style let's move on to the next area where we have an SRS actor which is limited just to this area so we can edit all this without affecting anything else. For this next style, what I first want to do is I want to change the materials, because I want some patterns. So let's go to the Starlight Rendering System folder and open Demo. Head to Materials and Patterns 
and I'm going to drag and drop th these, this first pattern material onto our character and the other two meshes. And I'm going to drag the sixth material onto the other materials, uh, the, the other actors and meshes right here. Once again, we're going to start by editing the highlights. So open the highlight tab and add a gradient. For this we're going to use the smooth gradient. Now I don't want any smooth transitions because we want a cell shaded style. So set the gradient strength to zero. This will make it so this does not affect the color. However, this gradient has another effect which is controlling the size of the patterns as you can see right here. Now this is already looking good. Um, what I want, maybe want to do is I want to decrease the maximum size, the maximum thickness of this pattern. So decrease this max thickness parameter right here. This is looking good. And now I want to add a background right here. So just open the pattern background category and increase the strength. The pattern background is another layer that works similarly to the basic layer that we have um, right here. However, it does not apply patterns. And I want this final layer to be a bit bigger. So enable overrides right here. And then increase the size for this highlight background right here. Now let's move on to the rim lights. Expand the rim light category and add the smooth gradient once again. Set gradient strength to zero and add a pattern background. Now previously with our highlights we used a pattern background strength of approximately 0 0.2. So let's use it here again. Now I want the maximum thickness of the rim light of the patterns in the rim light to be um, a bit smaller because this is looking too thick and this is alright. Now let's do the same thing for the shadows. Expand the shadow category, set the gradient to smooth, disable the gradient strength and enable a pattern background. Set this to something like 0 0.6 and I want this pattern background to reach just a bit further once again, like we did with the highlights. So uh, we have to increase the size of this pattern background. For this, once again, enable the overrides for size and gradient start of the pattern background and increase this. This is looking good. Now all I want to do is modify the size of the pattern. So um, decrease the max thickness a little bit right here. And this is looking good. Now if we wanna change the size of our patterns, all we have to do is head to our pattern material and scroll down to pattern and here we can modify the scale. So if you think that on our character this is a bit too small or too big, um, you just increase it like this. This is looking good, so we're ready to move on to Metallic. For Metallic, we're going to do the same things in the Metallic Shading tab of our SIS actor. Now with this, we have successfully created our second style. Let's move on to creating the third style. Let's go to the next area. And for this style, I want there to be a pattern on the inside and a line on the outside. In order to create this, we once again need a material with patterns. So I'm going to use the same material we used previously. And now I'll click on your SRS actor. And we're going to start by modifying the default shading highlight. So expand default, expand highlight. Now add a smooth gradient once again. And set the gradient strength to zero. 
Now we want the outside to be thick and the inside to be thin. So what we have to do is we have to set this zero that handles the thickness of the out at the outside to one. And the pattern um, max thickness, which handles the thickness at the inside, to a smaller value. Something like this. This is looking good. Now let's do the same thing for our shadows as well. Add a smooth gradient, set the gradient strength to zero, and change the thicknesses. This is looking good. Now let's do the same thing for our rim lights as well. This is already looking really good. Now I want just want to add a pattern background in here. So go to all of those categories and set the pattern background strength to something like 0 0.5. With the default side being done, we can move on to metallic. Once again, we're going to need a um, material with a pattern, so let's use the same one we used before. And now oh, we have to do all the changes we did previously. With this, our style is done. Next up, I'm going to demonstrate a style that works really good on metallic objects. In order to create this style, go on your SRS actor and click on highlight. Here you want to select the gradient stripes 2 and we have to increase the gradient start. Now if you if we open our metallic material right here and increase the highlight size just a little bit. This not too much of course. Something like this. And then readjust the gradient start. You will see a style that looks really authentically, like metallic. Now there's one more caveat to notice. If you look at the shadow right here, you, you'll see that your highlight crosses into your shadow. This may be really useful if you don't want your characters to, to lose that much detail when they're in a shadow. However, um, in cases like this, it doesn't look as good. So you'll have to decide whether you want highlights and shadows or not. If you d decide you don't want them in your shadows, what you can do is go to the General tab and go to the Advanced category. Here you'll find the setting Show Highlights, Rim Lights and Shadows. Disable this and you won't have highlights, rim lights in your shadows.